Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to show you how to draw a load shear moment diagram of a beam with a distributed load. This is a pinned beam on the ends here. Um, I have to apologize, they're tearing down a building about, oh, 50 feet from my window here. And there's a backhoe tearing down a brick wall. So sorry about that, we just have to live with it for today, I guess. So we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to figure out the left and right hand reaction forces at step one. Step two, we're going to come over here and we're going to sketch out a load shear moment diagram. I'll also follow it up on my computer so you can see how the calculations are made in MathCAD. So to figure out the reaction forces, we have our four-step process with the uh, optional fifth step. Um, our four-step process is, one, start with a working diagram. Well, that's it. Two, draw a free body diagram. I'm going to convert this into a free body diagram here in a minute. Step three, equations of static equilibrium. And step four, we're going to solve for something. So let's get going here. Normally, I would draw the free body diagram down here, but I don't have a lot of space on this little board. So let me uh, just convert this to a free body diagram. So here we are. We've got the left hand and the right hand pins have been replaced by the forces that those pins exert on the beam. It's a free body diagram, so it's been cut free of its supports. I have my positive sign convention here, so I'm good to go there. Now, in order to deal with the distributed load, in order to find those forces, I can concentrate that load at the centroid of that area there. So the total load is going to be the integral from this end to this end, just the area under that curve. And uh, by to figure out where to put that, I also have to find the x location of the centroid of that shape. Well, it turns out that's not too hard. But let's, uh, let's draw our concentrated load here. That'll be F total. I'll replace that with a number here in a second. And there's X bar. So remember the pins at the end don't know the difference between a distributed load and a properly concentrated load. They experience the same forces either way. The beam does know the difference so that when we're drawing the load shear moment diagram we have to go back to the original distributed load. We're not going to use the concentrated load for that. That gives you the wrong answer. All right, so there we are. So there's step two. Step three, equations of static equilibrium. Well, let's start by summing the forces in the vertical direction. Okay, that's pretty easy. Step two, or number second equation, I guess. I have to so sum the moments about some point. Well, I can pick any point I want. If I sum about the left end, and maybe I'll call these, I'll even name those L and R. Okay, so that, that L makes sense there. Um, if, I constant, if I sum the moment about that point right there, the perpendicular distance between that force and that point is zero, so the FL drops out. That makes it easy. So, uh, put my finger there. The total force acting upwards is going to try to rotate the beam uh, counterclockwise, which is in accordance with my sign convention, so that makes that positive. So x bar times f total, and I'll, uh, I'll, I, we, I know what those are now, I'll just put the numbers in later. fr is pointing down, so that's going to try to rotate the beam clockwise, which is counter to my sign convention, it makes this negative. Now, if you, can you see all that? Yeah, I've got plenty of room here. Um, if you solve those, you're going to find out that FL Okay, so what, what do the positive numbers there mean? It means I drew the arrows in the right direction. I guessed since all the forces here are up, those would be down. Seemed like a safe bet. So I've got everything I need here now. Let's uh, Go over here, and I'm going to sketch out our load shear moment diagram. Okay, so there's load shear and moment. Um, load's easy. I'm just going to transfer the loads 
from this uh, working di or free body diagram over to here. And my reaction forces at the end are down. So I'm going to just put those on there. OK, so there's, there's my reaction forces. Draw my distributed load up here. OK, so there we've got it. Now, the shear is just the integral of that. So for shear, I'm going to start down here. Remember, height here equals slope there. So my height is zero. My initial slope will be zero. Height is becoming kind of a, almost a constant here. So my slope out at this end will also be about a constant. So now because I've got a negative 960 uh, reaction force at the end, that better end at 960. You can you see I don't have that scaled very well. Last thing to do here is I'm going, for my moment, I'm going to integrate this again. Start with a negative height, so negative slope, positive height, positive slope. And it's going to be a little asymmetric here, so it looks, should be, look kind of like that. Now, that moment is negative. and just naturally drops out of integrating the uh, shear function. Is that right? Well. Remember, we're working with the beam sign convention or the designer sign convention, depending on what you want to call it. And remember how that works. Here's a beam, a little piece of balsa wood here. That's positive. This is negative. Well, if I have pinned ends and a load in the middle, this thing's going to bow up in the middle. That's a negative curvature caused by a negative moment in the designer sign convention or the beam sign convention. All right, with this drawn out here, let's go to my computer and we'll do the calculations a little more precisely. All right, here we are now on my computer. And again, we've got the backhoe running outside, so sorry about that. But uh, this is MathCAD. This is a number crunching program that's pretty easy to use. And uh, let's just walk through this. Right there is our function. So right here is what the function looks like. This is what I had drawn on the board. There's our total force, which we calculated before. And there's the location of x bar. f total here is the same as that integral down there. So 2.483 meters. We've got all that. And again, we figured out the right hand and the left hand forces. So let's scroll up here a little bit now. And shear is now the integral of the force across the beam, subtracting the left-hand force there. Now, and I had it evaluated symbolically. That long, long uh, string of decimal points is uh, because the uh, symbolic processor uses as many decimal points as it can. But it's the same thing as that number right up there. And just to double check, the shear force at 4 meters better be 960 because that's my force at the right end, and it is. Right, so let's now integrate shear to get the moment. And so I got that. I guess what I can do here is I can show you what that is, although there's going to be some long decimal points on this probably. Yeah, there it is. Long strings of decimal points there, but same as before. And again, the moment should be zero at the end because it's pinned at the right end. There can't be any moment there. Well, I got 1.506. Well, that's not zero, but 10 to the minus 12, that's zero. So let's plot those out now. Here's the shear diagram, very much like what I drew on the board. And you can see we go from minus 5, whatever that was, 586.667, up to uh, 960 on that end. Right, so uh, slope is pretty much zero. Slope goes up to some positive semi-constant number. Now, last thing, let's take a look at the moment. All right, should have negative height there, so negative slope there. Positive height there, positive slope there. Now, the only thing you can't really see is, is that zero right there? Well, that's negative 200 and plus 200. Yes, that's zero. If we want to uh, explore a little more closely here, let's uh, expand that out a little bit. There we go. And you can see right there, it really does start and end at zero. 
So there you have it. We started with a uh, simply supported beam, pinned beam, with a non-constant distributed load. We concentrated the load to figure out what the uh, reaction forces were at the left and the right ends. And we've now drawn the load, the shear, and the moment diagram. So I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.